directly himself to us today. And he's dying, Lord. Just need a little time. Just please. I want to thank you first off for my day. That messed around and found out the secret. Because there was a secret assault against my life. There was a secret assassin against my life. I didn't realize that what I was going through was a plot and a ploy to kill me. But God told me, dang, he calls the enemy a captain to tell me, to tell me, dang, what was going on. I couldn't see because all I was in was pain. See, what I didn't let y'all know about when I called Quincy, I had a Daniel named Thelma Underwood, my first cousin. That was my dad. I walked in the house, messed up, tore up from the floor, all discombobulated. Walked in the house, had a phone with a built-in answer machine on it. Mine was so distraught, I ain't know what to do. I thought I was having a nervous breakdown and didn't know how that feel, but I thought that's why it's gotta be what this is. Cause I'm messed up, I'm messed up. I hear the phone ringing, but I'm so messed up, I couldn't even answer the phone. I was that discombobulated, I could take you to the spot where it happened in my house. I was that discombobulated in the apartment if the people living in there, I'll show y'all exactly what went down. I was so discombobulated that I didn't know what to do, what was going on. The only thing I could think of was I'm having a nervous breakdown. I'm about to lose my mind. That's all I knew. And baby, my phone was ringing and, and I couldn't even answer my phone. I had a recliner in my, in my room by my bed. I had the phone sitting on top of the recliner. I see it. I can tell you everything that happened. It was a brown suede recliner. The, the phone was sitting right on the right arm of the recliner. It was ringing. And then all of my voicemail was built in where if you if I didn't answer the, the voice, you can hear it loud. You know how them old house phone was. You can hear it loud when somebody leaving a message and all. And I'm there, the phone ringing, and I'm so messed up, I couldn't even answer the phone. God knows I'm telling the truth. I was so messed up, I couldn't answer the phone. And it was Thelma on the phone and she in Kansas I think it was Oklahoma at the time and the Lord done sent me a Daniel from that far away I answered the girl on the phone and she said cuz I don't know what's going on with you but the Lord told me to call you and to pray and she began to speak in tongues and as she spoke in tongues I'll forever love Thelma all my days I'm serious as she began to speak in tongues something like a rubber band bumped inside my head said pow and when it I said, pow, I got my mind back. I, I couldn't, I mean, I, I said, what? I'm telling you, the devil was literally trying to kill me in the pain that I was in. And what I felt literally, that thing snapped like a rubber band. And all I could do by the time she got finished, she was on the voicemail that she was leaving and all. By the time when I got to the phone, I called Brother Joe. He'll tell you this. I said, brother, I explained to him what was happening. He said, Delphine, you was having a nervous break down, girl. You was literally about to lose your mind. He said, I don't have them. I know what time it was and what was happening. Literally, it was like I could not think. I did not know my hand from my feet and all. I was so wrapped up in the pain that I was feeling. If you don't mess around and get out of that stuff, y'all, it will mess you up. But I had a day. Lord, give my cousin some time. Give my cousin some time. Glory. Give my cousin some time. Give my cousin some time. Give my cousin some time. Give her some time. Because of who she is, not because of what she had done, I think God just called his man. But Thelma was speaking to the woman of God in me. She was speaking to that person in me that was fighting 
to come out. That person. And because she was speaking to that person in me, she healed it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She was healed. Because she had a day. She had a day. Do not dishonor your day. Please. Do not disrespect your day. Do not rebel. Be stubborn against your day. Don't bring hell in your house, y'all. Bring the peace back to this house. Bring the Ark of the Covenant back to this house, y'all. It is your responsibility. It's not solely mine. It is for me to maintain what is brought. What do you bring it? Do not put all the obligations or the, risk, or the duties on me because they're not all mine. It's my responsibility to maintain it. If you come in here and you bring peace, you don't want me to come in this pulpit and disrupt it. It will be my responsibility to maintain it. That's the reason why you get messages based off of what you bring in here. So if you come, I done told y'all, y'all thought I was playing, y'all thought I was lying, didn't you? I done told y'all, if you don't want God to deal with it, don't bring it in his house. I done told you. Because it's my responsibility to maintain this house. But I can't maintain peace. We ain't bought none in here. I can't maintain joy. We ain't bought none in here. If you done come in with a whole bunch of bull crap, then I gotta address that bull crap. Don't be mad. You bought it in here. So that must be what you wanted that day. You must have wanted this type of message. Oh, you got it. But if you'd have come in here, upbeat, feeling God, yes, Lord, I guarantee you God would have prophesied your future to you. God would have told you what he wanted to do because this is October. And this is the new calendar year of the Lord. So instead of being rebuked, you should have been hearing the Lord said by December, X, Y, Z going to happen for you. Uh, the Lord said in this season, he's going to do this, 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 this. That's what you would have been hearing had you been in right standing. Huh? Had you been in the right place where the anointing could minister to you like that because it has the capability of doing it. But if you're not in right place, then the anointing can't talk to you like that. The anointing got to address you where you are. It's got to address you where you are, y'all. So if you want to hear prophetic words and you want to hear prophetic praises and all and know the agenda of the Lord, get yourself in right order. Get yourself in right standing. And that's what he will bring. That's what he will say. That's how he will speak. He wasn't going to speak that to rebellion. No, he was going to say rebellion. You better stop. You get what you bring in. That's what you get. You get what you bring in. You get out of what you bring in. Put a hundred in the bank. You gonna draw a hundred out. I'll get you some overdraft charges. <laughs> so if you bring it in, you'll be able to draw it out. You come in here with some hell? I'm preaching about hell that day. Because that's what you bought. You come in here with heaven? I'm preaching about hell that day. Because that's what you bought. That's what you were in pursuit of. 
you're going to get out of God. You're going to get out of it whatever you pursue. If you pursue peace, you're going to get peace. You pursue hell, you're going to get hell. Bottom line, to understand the ways of God, y'all. What time is it? What time is it? I'm in a season now that I would love to see the rest of y'all in. I would love to see the rest of you in this season. I'm in a season now, you know, a season of being embraced, not a season of being rejected, but I'm in a season of being loved, you know, a season of being desired. I'm in that season, and that should be the season that you're after as well. You, if you are genuinely connected, if you are not rebelling, if you are not dishonoring, and you're not disrespecting me, you're not being stubborn against the house, the God of the house, and the shepherd of the house, then you should be right in that place because I desire to take you in that place. I have not one time said, God, I want to go, but I don't want you to take them. I wish I would talk to God like that. I'm, I wouldn't even play with God like that. No, when you bring me out, let my people go. Yeah. Let my people come too. So I'm in a new season now. I'm in a season of being wooed. Yeah. 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 I mean I mean that naturally and spiritually. I'm in that season. That season of being listened to. Ain't nothing like somebody taking the time to listen to you. I'm in that season. And you should be as well. Because that is the season that is upon us. But if you walking in hell and you dwelling in pain and all this, you know, and you're not trying to find the, the release valve for it, but instead of just holding it, it's going to bust. And it's going to cause some problems. And it's going to kill more than what you want it to die. I'm telling y'all. It took Annie Cunningham some years to regain respect for me because she saw me do that. It's going to cost you something now. It's going to cost you something. Holding pain, being angry, being bitter, all of that, refusing to let go, refusing to understand, refusing to let God bring peace, to let God bring healing, it's going to cause. Because it's going to cause you to start hurting people. It's going to cause you to start hurting innocent people. And it's only so much abuse people will take before they want out. So it's very important that we learn how to process pain. That we learn how to deal with things. I told y'all I was in an enormous amount of pain that day at service. I just had caught Quincy. I was in an enormous amount of pain. So it's very important to know how to deal with pain. Because pain can destroy. Not handling pain properly can destroy. It can. It will cause you to isolate it will cause you to internalize, and it always make you think you ain't understood. Don't nobody understand. That's the first thing pain do, because see, that's his way of getting you by yourself. If it makes you think nobody understands you, and it causes you to get in a place of isolation, then the enemy finna wear your butt out. 
He's going to wear you out. 